Hi, my name is Russ Groves. I'm a partner here in the Labor and Employment Group at Denton's. Welcome to Denton's Plus. This is a series where we provide answers uh, to the most popular questions that were asked during our webinars. We recently hosted part five of our Labor Spotlight series, where we discussed the risks of engaging contractors and temp employees from a labor relations standpoint. We're back to answer your most pressing questions. So we talked about three main issues relating to contractors and temp employees during the webinar. The first was where you can have a contractor who is dependent on um, the person or the entity contracting with them. And in those cases, there's a risk that they could be deemed dependent contractors and found to be capable of unionizing in the same way an employee group could unionize. The second issue we looked at was where a contractor and contractee are so tightly integrated uh, and dependent on each other that the labor board can find that they're actually related employers. And so the collective bargaining rights uh, held by one um, of those entities would apply to both. And then the third situation or issue we looked at was where the client of a temporary health agency was found to be the true employer of the agency's workers that were placed with them. And in that case, uh, the, the employees were able to unionize with the client. Um, so these were all um, common techniques that employers engage in to limit risk of unionization, but actually had uh, backfires. So we looked at uh, how to avoid some of those risks in the webinar. One of the questions that came up was specifically how to limit the risk of temp help agency workers being found to be employees of the uh, client. Um, and it is a struggle because um, a lot of the factors that will come into play are those that uh, can help a business operate more smoothly. For example, um, to help limit the risk, the client, um, or we'll call them the employer, um, should limit the amount of control they have over those temp health agency workers. They shouldn't be involved in hiring them, uh, training them, um, or supervising them to the extent possible. And I, we understand that that's often challenging, um, but to the extent that those duties can be uh, offloaded to the temp health agency itself, uh, it, the better. Um, the uh, client or the employer should also not be involved in payroll, uh, discipline or enforcing any policies or implementing policies with respect to those workers. Um, that should strictly be the job of the temp health agency. Um, and then um, finally, uh, having a lengthy relationship with any one temp health agency employee is not ideal. Um, and so we recommend a situation where the agency uh, sends uh, rotates workers uh, regularly so that there isn't a situation where you have staff working for many years uh, through a temp health agency. So those are some tips on how to avoid the finding um, that <clears throat> temp health agency employees are your employees. Um, tune in to the uh, webinar to get the full story on that point and the two other issues we discussed. And of course, feel free to reach out to anyone on our team for more information. That's it. Thank you.